well, as they say in my uh, neck of the woods, Chag Sameach, which is no more than happy holiday. And uh, if we weren't a cult before, thank you for wearing white. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's traditional to wear white on Yom Kippur, um, but I wear what God tells me to wear. Doesn't mean you're violating by wearing white. It's traditional, right? It represents that you've been cleansed, but listen, there's plenty of uh, sinners that get baptized, right? And come up wet sinners, right? Because they never truly repent and make a life change. So the white ain't going to cleanse you. The Bible ain't going to cleanse you. You know, the bloody issue is going to cleanse you, right? Okay. Um, you know, I read a psalm. I've you know, been doing that for 25 years before I even came here. But I've probably read a thousand psalms here because I've been here 21 years. This is a psalm I don't think I've ever read. So I'm really, really, really excited to read it. It's the only psalm written by Moses. So it's like the oldest psalm. And if you have your Bibles with you, it's Psalm 90. And um, just to give you the backdrop, because these are all songs, you know. And when I was listening to rock and roll in the 70s, whether it was Led Zeppelin or, or whoever it was, you know, these songs come from somewhere. They're not, they're not just random. I mean, whoever wrote these songs, there's a reason something was going on, and I like to know the origin of everything. You know that by now. Where did this come from? Where is this colloquialism? You know, what's its origin? So the origin of this probably is that um, this is the tolling of the death bell. They're in the wilderness, and every day it's like 100 more, 100 more, 100 more, 100 more. People are just dying left and right. And uh, this was Moses' prayer known as the man of God. Adonai, you have been our dwelling place in every generation before the mountains were born, before you had formed the earth and the world from eternity past to eternity future, you are God. So why is he opening like this? Because there's so much transience going on right now and so much mortality, he finds relief in the eternal and unchangeable God. Do you understand that? There's a lot of transience going on in our lives, right? And there's a lot of mortality going on in our lives, right? There's a lot of craziness going on in the world, right? But we should find relief in the eternal and unchangeable God that we serve. Amen? Okay, it says, you bring frail mortals to the point of being crushed. Guys, I, I know people are legends in their own mind. Even some people that, you know, admit that they're not, but deep down they think there's something special. I, I, that's fine in the world. That works in the world. There's big shots in the world. In the body of Messiah, <laughs> you want to talk about your accolades and all the things you do? I, I'm all ears. If somebody asked me, are you a good guy or a bad guy, I, I wouldn't know how to answer that. I wouldn't say a good guy because the Bible says there's no one good. So I can't really say that. Somebody might say, oh, Greg, oh, Greg you're a good guy. Really? Based on what? Who are you comparing me to? You know, Jack the Ripper or Jesus the Messiah? So, I, you know, I think a good guy, a true good guy would say, I don't know. Sometimes I guess I'm a good guy and sometimes I'm not a good guy. Right? Everybody fall in that category? Good, you're in the right place. It says, you bring frail mortars to the point of being crushed. Why does God crush us? People, repent. That's why he crushes us. He doesn't crush us for no reason. He's not some sadistic father. Let me give it to them. He, he's begging us to repent because w before the eyelids close, all your sins are written in pencil. Once your eyelids close... It's permanent marker, Sharpie, nothing you could do about it. So it's almost like he's begging people to repent, which is pretty nice of him, if you ask me. Far from your viewpoint, a thousand years of merely like yesterday or a night watch. Now everybody reads in the New Testament, a thousand years like a day. Yeah, that wasn't invented in the New Testament. In fact, nothing's invented in the New Testament. There was always, you think nobody got saved in the Old Testament? They got saved based on what your shoe was going to do, but you can't get saved just by what your shoe it did. You got to repent and walk in a certain way. Nobody walks in perfection, but man, you know what I mean? We all fall short of the glory, but some people are too dang obvious. You hear what I'm saying? It says, 
when you sweep them away, who's them? Us. Us, with are them? <laughs> they become like sleep. By morning they are growing grass, growing and flowering in the morning, but by evening cut down and dried up. What is this speaking about, guys? What do you think it's speaking about? What do you think Moses is declaring? The brevity of life. Some of you are 70, 80. Don't you remember when it was like yesterday you were graduating high school? The brevity of life. You know Charles Spurgeon said about this verse? Sown, grown, blown, moan, gone. And people are holding on. Well, if I could just make it to, you know, they're so proud, I'm, I'm 80. On an eternal scale? We're so focused on the temporal, it's crazy. Well, I take that back. If you're in the world, it's not crazy. But if you're in the Lord, it's crazy. For we are destroyed by your anger, overwhelmed by your wrath. You have placed our faults before you, our secret sins, in the full light of your presence. Oh, fool in God. Fool me, I can fool you. We could all be fooling each other today. All our days ebb away under your wrath. Our years die away like a sigh. Rabbi, this is depressing. This is real life. You just don't want to deal with it. I could be that guy that comes out and says, this is the day the Lord has made and smile. And we can listen to Chris Tomlin songs. I can give you a cute coffee. Maybe have some smoke screens. And then you can leave the same way you came, dead in your sins. But that would be a shame. The span of our life is 70 years, or if we are strong, 80. Isn't that amazing? This was written 3,200 years ago, and guess what the insurance tables tell us? Guess what science tells us? That a person lives three score and ten, some four score. That's amazing. Really. We're right in the end days, and this is true. 3,200 years later. Amazing. Yet at best, listen to this. Can anybody relate to this if you're willing to be honest? Yet at best, it is toil and sorrow over in a moment, then we are gone. You know what the psalmist is saying? That life is weariness. Anybody weary? Anybody lying? The, the ones that didn't put up your hand, you, now it's your turn. Good. One ailment follows another. Not when we're young. But then 50, you know that time we have our first, we call it a procedure. I'm just going in for a procedure. One ailment after another, after another, after, but we don't want to admit it. No, we're good. We're good. And then the smallest tasks are an effort as we age. The smallest tasks can overwhelm us. Rabbi, come on. Hey, guys, I'm just reading the Bible. <laughs> what do you want from me? Yeah, I could have picked Psalm 150. Everything that has breath, not for Yom Kippur. Who grasps the power of your anger and wrath to the degree that the fear do you should inspire? You understand? So teach us to count our days that we will become wise. Look, eternal life is a long time, but this is the life you got right now. And this is all you got. In fact, all you got is this very moment. I don't know what's going to happen later. Look, we went on an Israel trip in February. Two ladies were having the time of their life. They came home. They got diagnosed with cancer. A month and a half later, they were dead. Yeah, their spouses are watching. Just like that. Do you know anybody like that? I know, I, I know at least a dozen people here that that happened to. And you know what they thought? What you think, it's not going to happen to them. Return, Adonai. How long must it go on? Take pity on your servants. I'm only yelling because it's an exclamation point. Fill us at daybreak with your love. So that we can sing for joy as long as we live. Let our joy last as long as the time you made us suffer. 
for as many years as we experience trouble. But you know that you know what the psalmist is begging for? God's grace. Show your deeds to your servants and your glory to their children. And this is intercession at its best. And make no mistake, Moses was the intercessor of intercessors. The only one who intercedes better than him is Yeshua. May the favor of Adonai our God be on us. That's my prayer. Prosper for us all the work that we do. That's my prayer. Yes, prosper the work that we do. Now, I'm sure most of you, because Beth Yeshua is full of born-again believers, right? And not too many seeker-friendly come to listen to my rhetoric. That would be horrible. So most people are born again. So, even though this was written a thousand years before Yeshua, obedience is still the key, but much easier in light of the cross. Why? Because it's so easy to obey somebody you're in love with. Isn't it? Then it's not forced. Like, no offense, but I, I really honor people that stay married for the sake of Yeshua's name, but it's just not as much fun. You know what I mean? Or I honor people that obey God like it's just, I, I don't really like it, but at least I'm being obedient. How much more pleasurable is it when you're in love with the Lord and you know he's crazy about you, so anything he would tell you to do would never be to hurt you, but to bless you? Why would you not follow his ways if his ways are pleasantness, peace, prosperity, and protection? You got me. You got me. And Bern and I celebrated 34 years. A few people said, what do you do? What do you, what do you give her? Well, first of all, little princess went to Europe two weeks ago. But what did I give her yesterday? I gave her a card. And get this. I hate cats. In fact, I'm not that crazy about dogs. But, like, if, if I'm going to get a dog, it's going to be like a Doberman or like a, a Doberman. But I saw this card that I really wanted to get her, but then there was this card with cats on it. And she kind of likes cats. I hated buying the card, but I did. She opened the card yesterday, and she saw $340 in it, which... I said, what's this? I said, sweet pea, that's $10 for every year you've spent with me. And I said, if you can hack it 16 more years, you got a $500 gift card coming to you. <laughs> and that's tax-free money. So there's your rabbi. Look, it's hard being messianic, you know? I can't celebrate this holiday traditionally. I mean, I could, but I don't want it because I'm not traditionally Jewish. And I can't celebrate it like a Christian because then we probably wouldn't be celebrating it. So what do I do? I try my best, man. I'm just trying to figure it out. You know? There's a lot of stuff I don't know. There's a lot of stuff I'll never know. There's a lot of stuff I don't want to know. So I'm just trying to figure it out today. So if you don't like the way I celebrate it, make believe tomorrow's Yom Kippur and you celebrate it the way you want. I spent 33 years in the synagogue. Just to let you know, in Judaism, Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah are pretty much like Christmas and Easter in the church. You know how people show up on Christmas and Easter? I remember the first time I went to a church. By the way, my friend John Wood is here from Christ Chapel. Give him a little round of applause. He's my buddy. He's at, he's at this game a long time and he understands ministry and I understand ministry and you guys kind of understand it, but when you're in the midst of it, it's some days are amazing and some days are horrible. And some days you think you're the luckiest guy in the world and some days you think if I had wings of a dove, I'd fly away. And there's a lot of those days. But I went, we, I got saved and then three years later, I, I didn't even know you were supposed to go to church. And one day I was reading in the Bible in Hebrews about don't forsake the gathering. So I said to Bernard, I guess we should go to a church. We found the church because I didn't think any of the churches were different. I thought they were just in different neighborhoods. So if it was Episcopal or Methodist or Assemblies of God, I just thought they were Christian. <laughs> Boy, was that a rude awakening. <laughs> so I went, and a couple of weeks later it was Christmas, and we couldn't find a parking space. And now I'm totally ignorant of the whole church game, right? So I said to Bernard, I go, why is it so packed? 
what's going on? She goes, oh, people go to church on Christmas, and that's the only time they go to church. I go, why? I couldn't wrap my mind. I said, why? She goes, well, that's the only time they go. I go, but there's so much good stuff they're missing. So Jews go to synagogue on Rosh Hashanah because they blow the shofar. And on Yom Kippur, those 10 days, Noim, Yomim, the 10 days of awe, they're hoping that their name is inscribed in the book of life. May your name be inscribed in the book of life because the book is closed. Let me tell you, as a Jewish boy going to an Orthodox synagogue on Yom Kippur, it was scary. It was scary. Everybody's dressed in white and nobody's showered. <laughs> they don't shower on that day because there's some good parts to it. You know why? Because on that day, it's totally not about you. It's not about how you look. It's not about how you smell. It's not about how you present yourself. On that day, it's all about God and how bad we need to bridge the gap. So I still think there's a place for it. How, 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 how bad is that? Could any Christian tell me, I don't know, Rabbi, if the whole body of believers around the world came before God on one day and, and, and you know, repented and said they were sorry collectively, I don't think that would be a good idea. I think you call that the National Day of Prayer and Fasting, no? So we'll try to make the most of it. You know what I mean? Let God do what he's going to do with you. No control. I don't want it. You know, let God do what he's going to do with me. But in all of it, give God the glory to his great name. Amen. I'll pray quick. Father, thank you. I don't have it figured out. Nobody does here. But you do. And you have this day planned. So do whatever you want to do. Not that you need permission. But I want you to do whatever you want to do. I ask this all in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen.